1310 WICH with Fishing Today. Whether it's in the ocean, on the pond, in the stream, or off the dock, it's all about fishing. Let's join Jesse Roach with Fishing Today on 1310 WICH. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Fishing Today on WICH. With me, Rick Joseph on the other side of the glass. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. Well, usually we kick off with the news and weather, but uh, we have a guest who's on the phone with us, and he's going to be coming on. David Molnar of the DEEP is today. We talk about our ever-changing sound, the different species that are uh, coming in and the different species that are going out. Also, the water temperatures and all things that are factoring into what is going on around here as my buddy Joe DiOrio caught a redfish a few days ago off the coast and uh, we're seeing some reports of others we don't usually see around here and so we're going to be talking all about that today on Fishing Today on WICH. So uh, with that let's get Dave on the phone and uh, we will get some input on all this. Good morning Dave. Morning. How are we doing Jesse? Great. Thank you for joining. Figure out what is going on around here. Uh, we're seeing reports of more northern kingfish. The black sea bass are bigger. The scup are bigger and in bigger numbers. Uh, and, and just all sorts of crazy things going on around here, like we just said about the redfish. What is your take on all this? Uh, what's happening? Shifts in weather patterns, and essentially what our temperatures are increasing. Typically growing seasons for these fish. And these fish are migrating north, and they're expanding their range. So what's happened is that we've, we're seeing what's but typically we see in the mid-Atlantic, now up into Long Island Sound, like black sea bass and croaker, scup, northern kingfish, lizardfish. And uh, with this, what about uh, other species that might be uh, more dangerous to us, like bull sharks? Do you think they might also follow these species up and uh, become bigger in numbers around here? Uh, we haven't seen that. I mean, we haven't seen any any instances, nothing's been recorded even in the case of bull sharks recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last bull shark in New Jersey was way back in the 30s. I, I don't think that's going to occur. I think it's more highly migratory species, you know, that in, you know go into Long Island Sound during the summer and then move south during the winter. That may take advantage of the situation. It's also affecting uh, or going into the river systems with different species. And what about plant life? Is that also being affected? Yeah, I mean... Anytime you have, you know, habitat changing, you have, you know, global warming, which affects, you know, one of the more more important variables for the habitat, which is temperature, you're going to have winners and losers. Some species will do well and others will do not. So typically the species that do, don't do well will move to more, you know, better habitats, which typically is more north, so be, they're found more, you know, more northerly, and then the southern species will expand up into these areas. And that kind of affects, does that affect your baseline for the studies that you guys do over at DEEP and, and with, as far as regulations go and, and how that affects us anglers? Um, no, because we still see the, you know, the suite of species that we've been managing for, you know, for, you know forever, it seems like, mm -hmm. but for over 50 years. I mean, we're still seeing the same species, the bluefish, hickory shad, uh, you know, striped bass, summer flounder, tautog, weak fish. I mean, they're still very common, and and they, you know, those species have always been here. Mm -hmm. I mean, these these species don't recognize political boundaries, and they migrate up and down the entire coast as the seasons change. And uh, the lobsters too. Is that is that something more of a die off, or are these actual are they actually migrating north out of the warmer waters? Yeah, well, lobsters exactly being a arbor. You know, has moved more nor more northerly. That's why the the stock is so very, very robust and abundant in Canadian waters in the Gulf of Maine because those, that's the preferred habitat for that species. You know, if if we were to experience a mini ice age for a decade or two, we would uh, with fishing regulations or conservation wise to even really bring the lobsters back. This is more of a natural occurrence that that is kind of out of our hands. I mean, you could potentially el eliminate lobster fishing and over decades and decades and decades perhaps you would see those be a few lobsters that did remain you know reproduce and their young could survive but most humans are impatient and we're not going to wait for decades and decades for that to occur so and there's still a small viable fishery out there i mean there are some lobsters out there it's just not their preferred habitat so they're not going to be so hot you know just like 
like other species such as rainbow smell, winter flounder. Those are cold water fish. Mm -hmm. Now, are these changes we just read uh, recently about the um, sturgeon and the, and the salmon uh, possibly taking up uh, spawning in the Connecticut River particularly, is, is that something that has to do with these warmer waters, or is that just uh, a, a strange incident? No, the, the Atlantic salmon spawning is just coincidental because we no longer trap them and hold them. So any fish that do come up the river are left alone, and and there happened to be a pair, and they were reproducing naturally. That's, that's, that's their job. They're anadromous fish. You know, they come into fresh water to reproduce. So that's why that occurred. I mean, sturgeon are slowly rebounding, and we're seeing more and more of them. But they're still, you know, protected species. Mm -hmm. But that has less to do with environmental changes. That's just something that just happened to be going on because of conservation? Correct. It's mostly because of conservation. Yes. I mean, this is, this is preferred habitat for them. It's just a matter of time because so long live and it takes them so long to reach maturity that it just takes a while. You have to be very patient. And if someone should accidentally uh, catch a, a sturgeon, what's the best way to handle that situation? Uh, to quickly release it with unavoidable harm. And we do see that, especially in the lower Connecticut River, people capturing sturgeon. Because, it's just, you know, typically at this time of the year in June and July, you see them reaching, you know, these leaping sturgeon and people are like amazed hmm. as they try to, you know, the reason why they do that is they're gulping air. Yeah, you know, because they have a primitive swim, swim bladder, so they need to gulp air into mm -hmm. the swim bladder. So we do see incidental snagging and catching, but, you know, most most people understand that. They release them with unavoidable harm. Okay, yeah, so basically as long as they're aware and to leave it in the water, unhook it, and right. just get Correct, it out of yeah. there as quick as right. you can. Absolutely. And, you know, and I, and I do put that kind of information in the marine fishing reports that we produce every week. So people are aware of what's going on out there when they see these sturgeon leaping. And you, typically it's the bottom fishermen that will incidentally catch them. Okay, like someone fluke fishing or whatnot, yeah. Right, yeah. And uh, another thing, too, I understand you have a survey for us anglers, and I'd imagine that's a pretty good way to also keep track of everything that's happening out here on the Sound as well. Uh, how does someone get involved with this survey? Uh, well, we have uh, a few surveys. There's, you know, like, the one you're probably speaking of is the Marine Voluntary Angler Sur Survey Program, which is complete volunteer, volunteer basis. It's designed to collect fishing and trip and catch information from marine, you know, recreational anglers, you know, people who fish hook and line and record their, you know, their angling activities on a logbook or electronically. And if they want to get involved, I'd greatly appreciate it because the more people, the better data and the better decisions we can make. You can contact me at 860-434-6043 or email me at david.molnar, M-O-L-N-A-R, at ct.gov. Up as well uh, on our uh, site and on our page to get people involved. So I understand that we're probably a pretty good source of information of all the anglers out there. Oh, correct. Absolutely. There's over 150,000 marine anglers. You know, we're, you know, we're a staff of about a dozen marine fisheries, and, you know, all that information is critically important for us to, you know, help assess the stocks of all these species. Mm -hmm. And with these temperature changes, uh, the striped bass obviously a very popular uh, catch in our area. Is that something that might affect them uh, with these temperature changes, or are they pretty much of this stuff? No, it doesn't affect them at all. Their, their range of temperature tolerance is extreme from 30 degrees to almost 85 degrees. Oh, wow. And higher, yeah. So it, actually, we're having a very, very good year of striped bass. I've never seen so many large striped bass get caught in the spring. It's just incredible. Yeah, the river was full. I mean, even uh, at the mouth, we were stopping. I mean, there were schoolies at, at one early point, but I mean, we stopped counting them at 20. I mean, they just couldn't stay off the hook. And then, obviously, as uh, the season progressed into the spring run, I mean, we were we were definitely seeing some pretty big numbers out there. Yeah, I mean, especially with the abundant bait supply. I mean, it's just incredible how many... Menhaden, silver side, hickory sheds of all sizes. There's a lot of bait, and the bass are here to feed on them, and it just creates a great situation for anglers. And uh, which brings us to another point with the migration patterns. Uh, with the warmer winter last winter, we, we saw a peanut bunker that just never left, and uh, blues that just kind of stayed, the outflow at Millstone, and, and just species that didn't take off. Will we see an increase of that if the winters stay mild? Oh yeah, absolutely. You will see that. I mean, this for the first time I've ever in my 28 years, I've I've never seen menhaden overwinter in in Connecticut like they did in the younger year, which are now one year old menhaden. 
survived, many of them survived, and we've never documented that as far north as here. So that's, that's going to be just a plus for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just means more bay, a very productive situation, better fishing. Well, that's, that is good news for us. And uh, so in a couple cold winters might change that direction, right? Oh, absolutely. Things, oh, yeah, because, yeah, you know, they are cold-blooded animals, so they need to migrate to their best temperature conditions. So if, if we have a really cold winter, you know, fish that do not migrate will, will, not, will not survive. But mm -hmm. we always do see, you know, over by Millstone at the outflow, we see exactly that hang on through the winter. I mean, we did have red, a few red snapper caught this spring. We'll see, you know, bluefish overwintering there, and we'll see ladyfish, because you know, that's the only really truly warm water due to the outflow where fish, of, you know, that species live, can survive there. Mm -hmm. and, and the recent redfish catch, do you think that's just a, a wayward fish, or are we going to possibly see some bigger numbers on these redfish? Well, the sock is rebounding, so it's but there's potential for them to, you know, come up here. I mean, we do see black drum, the puppy drum, they're young a year. We do other spe species in that family. Could be incidental, but I've heard reports that there was a school of those size fish in, you know, in around the hatchet reef area. We'll see if other anglers pick them up, but it's important to note that there is a 27-inch maximum size limit. So anything under 27 inches, you're allowed to keep, but anything over, you know, you must release with unavoidable harm. Oh, wow. That And that's because they're in their breeding years at that point? Correct, and that is a coast-wide regulation up and down the entire coast, even to the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so th that is really great information as we're seeing these fishes because someone catches a rare fish like that, they have, I have not any idea um, with this. And I know there's apps out there, too, uh, that you can get for your phone where you can check on species regulations uh, as you're fishing. Um, so right. that's also right. a, a yeah. good thing. So 27 inches and under, uh, which is not something we're typically used to, um, that is for the redfish. And uh, how about any of these other, like the kingfish that we're seeing and um, the triggers? Any regulation on them? No, there are none on those. And th those are all edible. Northern kingfish is edible. Great trigger fish. Um, and short lizard fish, I don't believe, is edible. But we've seen those for at least over a decade, and their, their abundance is slowly increasing. We have a new state record, actually, northern kingfish. A 20 inch fish was caught down in Milford earlier this year. Oh, wow. Okay. And are the kingfish more prevalent to the western sound, or we'll also see them here in eastern Connecticut? Um, they prefer hard, sandy bottoms. You know, they like to feed on sand shrimp. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so wherever, you know, wherever you find those locations. But typically in the summer, we always see these seasonal migrants, you know, these quote unquote tropical fish, mm -hmm. you know, coming up, especially the young a year, the smaller ones moving up. You know, you'll see banded rudder fish, stuff like that. And uh, they just happen to come up with the Gulf Stream, or is that... Uh, Correct, right. Yeah. Anytime you get a storm offshore and you get Gulf Stream waters, these gyres of waters that spin off the Gulf Stream and then enter Long Island Sound, you know, the, the species, those fish will migrate into the Sound. All right. Well, hey, David Molnar of the Connecticut DEEP, thank you so much for coming on with us. And uh, now you said there's a weekly report. Where can people uh, take a look at that? Yep, it's on our. It, it's produced every week. There's a freshwater and rain report, and it's on our website, the slash DEP slash fishing. Yep, just go to the DEP website slash fishing, and you can experience uh, the fishing report. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much, and uh, you know we'll try to also encourage our anglers to get involved with your programs, and especially the survey to to help you guys along with with your studies. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time. All right, Jesse. You guys have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, that was David Molnar with the CTDEEP, and uh, like I said, you can go to the site and uh, get that full fishing report, and also with the surveys, which we will put information on our Facebook page, Fishing Today on WICH, as well as our page that already has links to DEP as well. Yeah, that's and very interesting. How you know we've heard a lot about global warming, but it affecting marine life. You don't really think about that. Yeah, and in the first-hand uh, experiences with fishing, you know, um, otherwise you might hear about it, but, you know, our lobster fishermen are obviously taking a hit with Absolutely. what's happening out there. And then uh, my buddy Joe with that redfish, I mean, he was amazed, to, you know, something you're not expecting to catch. But it is important to note, like he said, the regulation, you know, 27 inches and under for the redfish, where you might be so excited you're just going to take it home right, anyways, right. but anything of breeding size, which I typically like to do with the striped bass too, where I don't really keep striped bass, 
but especially the release of bigger striped bass who are the breeders um the ones that really maintain the fish population is always good to to have around and and uh, there is a big conservation movement of anglers within the angling community to really just let the stripers go um, and if the shorter they are actually the the better if you're going to keep them because they're not breeding yet and um, they typically taste better too at a shorter length and uh, there are those short tags out there between 22 and 28 inches that you can get from the DEP they are in limited numbers at 3,000 there's two per angler and um, that's how you can get that so look we'll be back more fishing today we'll give you the marine forecast and uh and all sorts of other things right after this after a hard day don't you hate going to bed on your old lumpy worn out mattress that you just toss and turn all night long then you have dread the bed syndrome and the cure is only a bills bedding and furniture fall in love with a new Serta eye comfort memory foam or hybrid mattress with triple effect gel memory foam that responds to your body's need for comfort support and temperature regulation all in one bed let bills bedding match you up with your perfect firmness and show how the new eye comfort bed eliminates the annoying bouncing feeling every time your partner moves. The new Serta eye comfort beds are the most technologically advanced mattresses made today for outstanding durability that will last for years. For added comfort, try your new mattress on one of Bill's Bedding's five adjustable bases that help put your body in the perfect sleep position. And Bill's Bedding delivers free and sets up your new purchase too. Don't dread your bed anymore. Find out why more people love their new Serta eye comfort mattress at Bill's Bedding and Furniture, 640 North Main Street, Danielson, where Eastern Connecticut comes to relax. Another fabulous season of music continues on the Norwich Waterfront this Wednesday with Rock the Docks at the Howard T. Brown Park. This week, come enjoy the sounds of the 60s with the 60s Explosion Band starting at 6 p.m. Bring a chair and enjoy live music on Norwich Harbor. The 60s Explosion Band is sponsored by all your friends at Dime Bank. The 2016 Rock the Docks Concert Series is made possible in part through the generosity of the American Group, Norwich Public Utilities, Eastern Savings Bank, Andre J. Messier Jr. CPA, and Foggy Harbor Brands. Rock the Docks is organized by the Norwich Harbor Management Commission, the Greater Norwich Area Business and Industry Foundation, and the Greater Norwich Area Chamber of Commerce. Bring a chair and rock the evening away with live 60s music this Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Norwich Harbor, featuring the 60s Explosion Band, sponsored by Dime Bank. Every Wednesday now through August 10th, join the fun at Rock the Docks on Norwich Harbor. This Wednesday, don't miss the 60s Explosion Band at Rock the Docks. Local traffic in your home gives your flooring a real beating every day. We've got a jam in the kitchen with Fluffy. Looks like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich had a collision with a carpeting in the living room. And cleanup's going to take a while, judging from the skid marks on those hardwoods. The road to finding flooring that lasts starts at Colonial Carpet and Tile. Quality that lasts and lasts. That's what you'll find at Colonial Carpet and Tile. But what we sell is peace of mind. The peace of mind knowing that whether it's carpet, tile, vinyl, laminate, or hardwood, you'll know you're going to find something in our huge selection and know that it'll be durable enough for your home. Our family at Colonial Carpet and Tile would love to help you find the perfect flooring for your family and lifestyle. And with guaranteed installation, free in-home consultations, and a terrific selection of trusted brand names, you can always feel good with what you're getting. At 16 New London Turnpike next to Domino's in Norwich, call 887-9261 or visit ColonialCarpetandTileinc.com. The road to finding flooring that lasts starts at Colonial Carpet and Tile. Did that distract you? I'm Ned Hallowell, psychiatrist and author of the best-selling book, Driven to Distraction. I've just launched a new podcast called Distraction that's made here in Connecticut. I've seen a lot of people recently who think they have ADHD, but what they really have is a case of modern life. Find Distraction on iTunes and become a subscriber or visit distractionpodcast.com. Together, we'll turn these problems into strengths as we... Wait, what kind of bird is that? It takes a village and more to save pets' lives. At the Connecticut Humane Society, the focus in 2016 is to continue what they've done every year, save pets' lives. I'm Heidi Void of NBC Connecticut, and I've seen firsthand the life-saving medical care provided to the animals. They're kept warm and safe until a forever home is found. Join the mission to help the pets at the Connecticut Humane Society. Visit cthumane.org and find out more about how you can make a difference today by donating or volunteering. With your support, anything is possible. All right, we're back in with our marine forecast, barometric pressure, and tides. Here's Rick Joseph. Okay, for today, we're looking for easterly winds at 5 to 10 knots, seas 1 to 2 feet, 
isolated showers until late afternoon then the chance of showers and the slight chance of thunderstorms late today east winds tonight 10 to 15 knots diminishing to 5 to 10 knots after midnight seas at one to two feet this evening then one foot or less with a chance of showers tonight east winds for sunday around five knots becoming southerly in the afternoon seas at one foot or less and the chance of showers and thunderstorms again tomorrow then sunday night north winds five to ten knots seas one foot or less barometric pressure 29.88 inches tides low in new london well low tide was earlier there uh, it's on the way in now and high tide in new london at two o'clock this afternoon low tide old saybrook right around now high tide at 312 this afternoon in old saybrook and the average water temperature 72 degrees long island sound all right one more break then we'll be back with catch of the week right here on fishing today on wich when it comes to your retirement plan and insurance, does it seem like some big companies are trying to squeeze you in their little box? Ow. Then talk to us, Northeast Financial Group BP Learned. Our job is to ensure you and ensure your future, your, your plan, plan, your way. At Northeast Financial Group BP Learned, we're a family-owned independent agency, and we work with over 50 companies to make sure you have the right plan, the right fit for you. We have all forms of insurance, home, auto, life, health, financial plan, let our team at Northeast Financial Group BP Learned get to work for you. Call us today. Get the right fit now at 860-739-3124. 860-739-3124. Or visit our virtual insurance office at northeastfinancialgroup.com where you can get information or a quote. Serving Connecticut and Rhode Island for over 20 years. The right fit to ensure your future. Northeast Financial Group BP Learned. Do you know what that sound is? It's the sound of a person doing a gravestone rubbing of a long past family member. The stone reads born 1828, died 1879. This person was a loving mother of three and buried next to her are two of her children. That's her story. What will your stone say decades from now? What will your message or story tell about your life when future family members or passers-by come to visit? How will your stone look? What color, shape, or design will it have? What font or lettering will be displayed? Life is a celebration, but at some point, we all will be faced with choices to find a stone or monument to honor a final resting ground. Whether it's for yourself or a loved one, let Mercer Monument Works in Plainfield make the process a more pleasant one. Owners Graham and Kristen Hand Handle every customer with true compassion and sincerity. Their work is exceptional and beautiful. Visit Mercer Monument Works, 124 Norwich Road, Plainfield, or go to mercermonumentworks.com. Did that distract you? I'm Ned Hallowell, psychiatrist and author of the best selling book, Driven to Distraction. I've just launched a new podcast called Distraction that's made here in Connecticut. I've seen a lot of people recently who think they have ADHD, but what they really have is a case of modern life. Find Distraction on iTunes and become a subscriber or visit distractionpodcast.com. Together, we'll turn these problems into strengths as we... Wait, what kind of bird is that? It takes a village and more to save pets' lives. At the Connecticut Humane Society, the focus in 2016 is to continue what they've done every year, save pets' lives. I'm Heidi Void of NBC Connecticut, and I've seen firsthand the life-saving medical care provided to the animals. They're kept warm and safe until a forever home is found. Join the mission to help the pets at the Connecticut Humane Society. Visit cthumane.org and find out more about how you can make a difference today by donating or volunteering. With your support, anything is possible. Geico applauds your inner ride leader. An enthusiastic engine rev goes out to the biker in you who leads the pack. Even if that pack is a party of one, you're still a leader to Geico. To prove it, Geico will insure your motorcycle with great rates and 24-7 customer service. And with Geico by your side, you're never cruising solo, which means you've just been nominated as a real ride leader. Congrats. The smell of fine leather and trailblazing is in your future. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. I'm Rob Gronkowski. When the little voice in my stomach gets hungry, he doesn't just whisper. He yells, We need all-natural Alberto beef jerky. So next time the little voice in your stomach asks for a snack, grab the most delicious lean protein on the planet, Alberto beef jerky. 
Each package is loaded with savory cuts of lean beef. Listen to me and pick up some all-natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all-natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. And now the catch of the week on Fishing Today on 1310 WICH. All right, and Joe Diorio with that redfish, obviously the catch of the week in, uh, up there in Long Island Sound. We posted the picture on our Facebook page, Fishing Today on WICH. I hope you'll join us there, too, and interact with all the happenings that we have going on around here. And, uh, again, the redfish regulation, 27 inches and under if you happen to be out there on a reef near you and pulling in 27 inches and under is the regulation on redfish. So another great week in the books. Enjoy Sail Fest if you're heading out there tonight. And uh, fishermen, beware. There's, uh, there's going to be a lot of boat activity out there in the Thames River area. And uh, good luck to everyone out there. And have tight lines. And hopefully the rain will hold off for the fireworks down at the mouth of the Thames River. Until next week, have a great week out there on the water. Stay safe. See you next time.